Welcome to RP Gamer's review of Lies of P. This review is written by Squeakly Leo, read by JC Servant, and the video edited by Her Frog. Welcome to the Dollhouse. Along with leaving its mark on the industry and cementing an RPG subgenre, 2015's Bloodburn satisfied me so thoroughly that it still stands as the uncontested pinnacle of my personal Soulsborne Mountain. Even now, eight years later, I hardly would have expected it to become supplanted. That is, until I sat down to play through Nuis's and Round 8 Studios' Lies of P. I'm a little surprised to write these words, but I dare say that Lies of P is such a masterfully crafted, hardcore, gothic action RPG that it could even be said to outdo From Software at its own game. Lies of P is loosely based on The Adventures of Pinocchio by Italian author Carlo Codoli. Though the game's narrative is original, quite a few characters, locations, and themes from the literary work have made their way into the game, along with some easter eggs for those who are familiar with the story. The story is set in the fictional city of Krat, a large and opulent beacon of the Industrial Revolution, full of lavish opera houses, glitzy theaters, well-stocked storefronts, and craftsman shops. But the city also has its dark underbelly, where the poor eke out a desperate existence amid a twisting alleyway and cobbled streets. Players step into this world as the titular puppet P, awakened in an empty trash camp by a mysterious, ephemeral voice seeking his help. It turns out that Krat no longer resembles the bustling hub of progress it once was. The city's unfortunate human population has been cruelly set upon, decimated by a painful and deadly petrification disease, only to be kicked while already down when the city's puppets, intricate clockwork constructions acting as cheap and convenient workforce for menial labor, inexplicably slaughtered their one-time masters in an uprising known as the Puppet Frenzy. Despite being constructed with a fail-safe directive that should have made rebelling against their human masters impossible, the city's puppets continued the human's extermination started by the petrification disease, brutally picking off those who managed to survive the epidemic. These events set a grim and melancholy tone for the game. Players navigate through streets littered with decomposing carcasses and wreckage, artifacts of former life strewn about haphazardly during the humans' frenzied attempts to flee the death trap cat has become. The city is a vast spider web of pathways, patrolled by all manners of predators, both big and small. Though P begins his journey facing off against the frenzied puppets, there are plenty of other horrors lurking in the city's darker recesses. While the macabre tone is not new to the genre, what sets it apart is how it is elevated by juxtaposing it with truly grandiose locales and set pieces. This creates a final product that's equal measures jaw-dropping elegance and gruesome perversion. The white marble opera house is home to some of its most twisted freaks, while the cobblestone street leading to its entrance is patrolled by a hulking nightmare-fueled clown puppet that is formidable as a foe as any boss. Experience in the city of Krat in all of its broken glory is an absolute treat, and the act of striking out and exploring every nook and cranny is one of the game's most outstanding qualities. After fighting through an early game area and besting its boss, P arrives at Hotel Krat, a gathering place for the city's few surviving souls which become his base of operations. From here, the journey winds throughout and even underneath and outside of the city, including a factory where a rogue foreman is refusing to shut down the assembly line of murderous puppets, the Lorenzi Arcade, a cavernous indoor shopping mall that doubles as the tip of the hat to Kaladi's true identity, a gothic mountaintop cathedral in a subterranean catacombs beneath it, and many more. Liza P. utilizes the genre's trademark shortcut that double back to previous areas to great effect, including some very surprising ones that are impossible to see coming. Unraveling the intricate level layouts in this way is supremely satisfying to say the least. Standing front and center amid the level exploration is a smart and deep combat system that expertly builds on what the best in the genre has built before it while adding a variety of welcome and well thought out wrinkles. There are three base character builds to choose from, balance, dexterity, or strength, with each affecting P's starting stats and most importantly, what type of weapon he's most compatible with. Though weapon variety first appears limited, each starting weapon only differs in what type of sword it is. The pool that can be found, looted, and purchased over the course of the game is large and varied, giving players a ton of creative options for them to experiment with. The true genius of the weapon system doesn't present itself until P gains the ability to assemble his own weapons. 
every weapon in the game, except a few special powerful armaments, is made up of a blade and handle, which can be freely taken apart and reassembled in any number of possible combinations. For example, it is possible to affix the blade of the greatsword that scales well with P's stats to a pole arm handle, granting it further reach at the cost of speed and maneuverability of the original greatsword. Meanwhile, attaching a dagger blade to a mechanized piston handle creates a spear with motorized stabbing capabilities. The possibilities to tinker around with are vast, and since blades and handles can be upgraded separately, creative players will have a field day going to town on enemies in new and inventive ways. Each blade and handle also has a special ability called a Fable Art. Newly created weapons keep their inherent Fable Arts, resulting in an all-new ability combination, allowing players to create new tools of death on the fly to fit any situation. As a puppet, P also has access to Legion Arms, mechanical appendages that grant even further combat capabilities. Legion Arms can also be upgraded, with each having three unique ability expansion tiers, and all new Legion Arms can even be crafted from scratch with the right materials. Legion Arms allow P to do things like launch a rope to winch distant enemies closer to him, fire off explosive rounds, plant proximity mines, and more. Defense is an afterthought. Players will acquire new puppet parts to buff up P's defensive stats and are interchangeable on the fly. Certain situations may require better defense against slashing rather than piercing attacks or better protection against elemental damage. Finally, P's body itself can be upgraded to improve things like his available amount of health flask use, increased chances for a critical hit, or more powerful stagger attacks to throw enemies off balance. The amount of interlocking variables and moving parts are more than just a welcome addition, adding a ton of depth to what is initially presented as a straightforward swing sword to hit enemy combat system. Make no mistake, having plenty of combat options on hand is an absolute requirement. Liza P can be brutally challenging. Apart from the garden variety servants, maids, and chimney suites patrolling the streets, not to mention the numerous mini-bosses, full-scale boss encounters can, and often do, represent considerable skill checks. Early game bosses often consist of automatons of hulking proportions and visually striking designs. As the game progresses, their ranks expand to include other monstrosities, with a vast majority consisting of multi-phase fights. The game demands precise reflexes to best its intense challenges. Learning attack patterns and pulling off a split-second perfect guard to survive otherwise unblockable attacks unscathed is absolutely vital. It's not uncommon to spend hours entering the same boss arena over and over again, only to finally crawl out the other end with only the barest sliver of health remaining. P's body is beaten and is bruised as the player's ego. Even though most bosses allow for summoning an AI-controlled co-op partner, having a combatant on the field who cannot learn and adapt to the boss's combos and behaviors often makes going in solo a better option. Boss designs are deftly woven into the narrative of a particular area, often reduced to the twisted incarnations of the once-friendly machines they were, built to make life in Krat just a little more joyful. As players approach the end of the game's opening area, they enter an impromptu carnival ground, presumably abandoned during the puppet frenzy, empty booths lining the streets while cardboard clowns' cutouts jeer disturbingly. Hiding among the decor intended to delight little children is the maniacal Parade Master, a giant machine in a ringmaster's uniform who now uses his body as a battering ram. As P wears down his health, the Parade Master resorts to severing his own head as a makeshift flail, giving him longer reach and a whole new moveset. Every boss encounter offers something new and exciting to contend with, making every hard-earned victory feel like a well-deserved cherry on top of an already satisfying combat cake of twisted metal and cruel intentions. There's a lot more to Liza P than its difficulty, and it's clear the designers have taken careful stock of various aspects of the Souls-like formula in order to keep what works and improve what came up short. For example, blowing through all available health flasks might spell doom in other games, but Liza P actually encourages aggressive play when out of healing options by allowing a single health charge to be fueled back up by attacking enemies. Another welcome, albeit minor tweak to the formula, is the fact that any acquired ergo, Liza P in-game currency, dropped during a boss encounter now await the player just outside the boss arena, negating some of the peril of entering a challenging fight while carrying such precious cargo. The game's story never ascends to great literary heights, 
but is a lot more open and accessible instead of the hidden encrypted snippets of easy to miss text. The side quests that exist are fun scavenger hunts that may yield new items or at least mineral distractions. The most prominent of these is spread across the entire game as P is contacted via public telephones by a mysterious voice calling himself the King of Riddles, who, like many of the game's NPCs, is a nod to the game's literary source material. Accompanying the talented voice actor who bring these characters to life is an outstanding score. The music earns high marks during normal gameplay and frequently elevates itself further with beautiful flourishes. Players can collect vinyl records that can be played back at Hotel Kratz Gramophone Player. These records contain gorgeous full-length songs and instrumental tracks that feel tailor-made to accompany any stay in a beautiful historical city of Kraut. Songs about love and loneliness or longing for sunny warmth of a sandy beach in days long gone by. Even outside the hotel, musical surprises await. When carefully ascending the cobblestone rise in the heart of downtown Krat, dodging explosive shells lobbed by turrets from both sides, a lovely song suddenly filled the air, seemingly ripped from the daydream of the Parisian outdoor cafe. This added a touch of serenity to a looming threat of death all around. Not only does it sound great, Liza P looks the part too. The aforementioned enemy and boss designs, the gorgeous cinematics that introduce and often intersperse each boss encounter all look fantastic. Even in the moment-to-moment -moment flow of the gameplay, the game is a visual marvel, a stage display of mutilated puppet bodies strewn about the stage of an amphitheater and fights P for closer inspection. The resting skyline of crap when looking off in the distance from a high vantage point even something as simple as the display window of a abandoned storefront that deserves more than just a cursory glance. The dedication and attention to detail in Liza P are nothing short of impressive. My time with Liza P was exactly the intense and gratifying experience that I hoped for. As one who holds Bloodborne in the highest regard as one of From Software's finest achievements, I found myself absolutely enamored with Round 8 Studios' unique, clever take on the formula. While the game broadly functions similarly to the best of the Souls-like genres has to offer, Liza P's tweaks and refinements are so masterfully planned out and implemented that they make every moment of the gameplay a pleasure. From the dopamine hits provided by exploring the labyrinthine level layouts to the extreme elation of finally besting a challenging boss, there's nary a moment in Liza P media campaign that feels wasted or unsatisfactory. With a post credits teaser hinting at a second incredible twist on another literary classic lying in wait, the future looks bright for this new addition to the genre. Liza P, welcome to the top. Disclosure, this review is based on a free copy of the game provided by the publisher. RP Gamer gives Lives of P a 5 out of 5. For more details, hit up the link in the description below. For more video content, subscribe to the channel. Follow us on Twitch for daily streams of your favorite RPGs. Join in the discussion at rpgamer.com forward slash discord. And for the latest in RPG news, head over to rpgamer.com.